In this second video, the 4.4 Mathematical Modeling, we are going to cover three main goals. We are going to discuss the data, and then we're also going to talk about trends and how we can make predictions uh, to help you answer the remaining two through six questions uh, in your engineering notebook. You should have printed this, and you should have cut out this chart and taped it into your engineering notebook, and then now you're going to answer questions two through six underneath the chart. So the first question, which is, uh, I believe, number two, and actually before we get into number two, um, a quick review that slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, which is your equation here. Um, quick review, the m is your slope, which is your rise over your run. And then the B in the equation is your y-intercept. Um, just a quick review there. And then also, just so you know, the uh, other item that I'm going to be referencing, which is a good resource for you throughout this 4.4 uh, activity, is the PowerPoint, which is under the resources in the Project Lead the Way site. So if you're getting confused, this PowerPoint is a really good resource um, because they pretty much go through a very similar example, just a different scenario. Um, in the PowerPoint, and I'm going to be using that to help uh, discuss the questions. All right, so number two on the 4.4 um, handout asks, um, would you describe the relationship between average annual runoff and estimated annual rainfall as a strong correlation a weak correlation or neither provide evidence so you have to explain why you can't just put it's a strong it's a weak or neither and that's it if whatever you choose to write you need to provide evidence on why you think that um, so to help you answer that question pretty much is asking you is there um, a connection between the annual rainfall and the runoff um, do they correlate um, or do they, yeah, do they correlate together? Does one depend on the other? Um, and to help us answer that question, we're going to reference this R squared number. And that R value indicates um, how strongly the data follows your trend line. And this helps to predict future data. Um, for example, if your R squared was 0.65, that means that 65 percent of the variation in the y is due to the x. The other 35 percent is based off of other variables that we don't know about or are out of our control. So um, it's really helping you make predictions. So how is this going to help us answer question two? Well if you hover over this um, box right here or click on it, you'll notice that I added a note to this r value um, uh, cell and it says that when R is greater than 0.8 there is a strong correlation and when R is less than 0.5 there is a weak correlation so based off of that note right there you can tell me and this R squared value for our data you should be able to tell me if there's a strong a weak or neither um, and then use that note right there that I wrote to help you support your um, answer. All right, moving on to question three. Um, question three says to rewrite the equation of the trend line using function notation where RW represents annual runoff and W represents rainfall. So to help us do that, first off, you got to know what equation they want you to rewrite. Well, they want you to rewrite this equation using those variables, that RW and the W. So what you really need to ask yourself is what's going to replace the Y and what's going to replace the X. It's either going to be the RW or the W value. So it says that it wants you to, the RW should represent the runoff. Well, runoff is your y-axis, which is your y-intercept. So that tells you right away that the rw is going to replace the y. So this is going to say rw equals 0 .0, or 0 0.6185. What's going to replace the x? Well, that is going to be the w, 
which represents your annual rainfall, and then you're going to write minus 9.7758. So you're pretty much just rewriting that equation using those two variables, the RW and the W. Um, within number four, it wants you to identify the domain of the function. Um, that is, what values of W make sense. And then in there, we wrote you a quick note to remind you that domain is the set of input values of a function. And that um, a function is a relationship of one set called the domain to another set called the range that assigns to each element of the domain exactly one element of the range. Um, the action or actions that an item is designed to perform. So that's kind of the definition of a function. Um, but the question is really asking what is the domain of that function? Um, so let's just talk about that for a second because that's a mouthful. If you take a look at the um, PowerPoint, the second slide really helps break down and helps you answer number four there. Um, so if you take a look, the domain in this equation is your input. So that is going to be the items on your x-axis. So domain in this um, example is time. And if you take a look, they kind of wrote out their data values from least to greatest. So if you take a look, time um, has to be greater than or equal to zero. And then their range is the set of outputs, which here in this equation is distance. And again, they labeled it here um, and that distance is going to be greater than or equal to 3 because if you look, their first data value occurred at 3. So let's talk about ours. So what the heck is your domain? What is your um, input? So where does that input start? So our input, which is our domain, is the annual rainfall. Okay, so how much water is falling and hitting the earth? Well, that first starts at 0 because there can't be a negative rainfall. So your um, yours is going to be, uh, the, the domain is going to be W is greater than or equal to zero because the annual rainfall has to be greater or equal to zero. There's going to be some type of rainfall um, there. And that is actually why we, um, when we formatted the trend line, why we backed it up five units to get it back to down here. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is your range. So what is range? Um, again, like I just said from the PowerPoint, your range is your output. Okay. And in our scenario, that is our annual runoff. So if you think about it, the runoff um, has to also be greater or equal to zero since there can't be a negative amount of annual runoff. So your equation would be R parentheses W close of parentheses is greater than or equal to zero. So that is uh, should help you with four and five. Um, for number six, you have to determine slope of the trend line um, and you have to explain that slope in words. So you're going to have to do... Um, well, you have to look at your equation, and you should know what slope is, right? So that should help you answer the first part of it. And then you have to explain that in words. So think about rise and run when you're trying to explain that, um, but interchange those with um, estimated annual rainfall versus the average annual runoff. So, for example... Um, for every amount of runoff, um, how much is it for each portion of the rainfall? I guess is the best way to simplify that or try and explain that in words. Um, but I'll let you explain that slope in words for number six. For number seven and eight, you're simply just going to plug the, um, for number seven, the amount of rainfall. So they give you the 54. You're going to plug that in um, to your new equation for um, the W, which is we replaced um, X with W. So you're pretty much just going to insert that number here to uh, estimate the annual rainfall for, or I'm sorry, 
the annual runoff for um, number seven. And then the same thing for number eight. You're just going to plug in that 11 and a half um, inches, but this time that is going to be plugged in for the RW, which is your Y intercept, um, which represents your uh, average rainfall to get your, um, to determine your, um, the annual rainfall amount. So, uh, and please show your work for both of those answers. And that's it.